Welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this video, I'm actually going to be going over from start to finish of my entire stat system. Now, previously, there is a series of videos that I've done on the stat system where we were modifying the stat system as we were going along, making iterations. So we got to like this final product that was, it was decent, but it still felt like there was something missing. So I actually took it upon myself to work on this the past few months to where I made it a lot more robust. I made it significantly easier to build as well as um, when you're adding anything in the future, it's a lot simpler and it just makes your life so much better. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can go about setting that up, what exactly we are setting it up, as well as connecting it to a UI so that you can see how to go about using it within your own projects, projects and whatever you want to use it for. Now, the main purpose of this stat system that I'm using is it's actually going to be going into an inventory system that I'm building. However, I need this system to be out there and available to all of you because once that is available, when I go into the inventory system, I am going to be requiring people to have this stat system in order to kind of follow along. Now, it's not going to be necessary if you're just trying to understand how we're building things, but if you want to go piece by piece, this video is going to be very important. So with that being said, since this video is going to be that important, I am not going to be taking, let's say, tons of time with explaining everything. I will do my best to explain what exactly I'm building, but I'm not going to take my time as comparison to the other stat videos that I've made. So feel free to pause at any point in time. I broke this kind of down into different sections. Uh, I think about six sections that are going to be available. So you can kind of go through all of those and then I'll also make sure the chapters are available. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into it. Now, before we begin, I do want to specify that since this entire project is planned out, I already know what I'm going to add in. So while I'm adding in things, I'm going to explain why I'm adding it to the best of my abilities. However, we're going to still keep going along. So if you end up having questions, comment, join the Discord, or just review the project. Again, I also will have this on GitHub available so you can go and download the project directly to see the finished project. Now, that being said, we're gonna go into creating all of these steps. So do your best to follow along. Now, let's go into step one. Now, step one is gonna be creating the enums. This is going to be the enums that we're gonna be using throughout the entire stat system. So we're gonna go in here. And to prep ourselves, we're gonna go ahead and create four enums. Now, just follow along with naming them. So this one's gonna be stat type. And then I'm gonna copy this three more times. We're then gonna have stat list, which is essentially the list of all of the stats we're gonna have. Then we're gonna have attribute list, which is going to be a basically a separate type of stats which I'll explain in a moment as well. And then we'll go E operations, which are gonna be just basic math things. So we're gonna do this, this one first because it's very simple. This enum is gonna be add, subtract, and then we are going to do set. So while we are creating our functions, we'll be able to utilize this so that we can decide on how we're gonna modify our stats. It just makes it a bit easier going through. Now we're going to go to stat type. We're going to do this four times. The first one is going to be none. Then we're going to do default. Oop, I don't know why it does that. Default. And then we'll have bonus. And total. Now for the none, this is just so that if you ever add in the functions by default, it's gonna be set to none. And then that way it will force you to change the value. And if you don't change the value, we're gonna have something that's just gonna essentially pop up a warning saying, hey, you messed up here. That is mainly so we can have some type of layer to protect us from messing up on forgetting to change values. So it's more of a reminder, you don't have to do it, but I like to do it as it's a good reminder to myself. Now, 
the way the default bonus in total works is that default is essentially the base stats. This is what your character is going to have um, through without items, any type of buffs, all of that. This is the base values. Bonus is essentially going to be anything else. It could be items, it could be buffs, it could be debuffs, anything of the sorts. And then total is going to be the calculation of both the default and the bonus combined. So it's just very simple. Let's add these together. That's our total. Now you can add other layers. So like if you wanted to separate for items, you could do that. And then you could then do these three layers. Now I'm only going to be doing two in the video. However, later I will explain where you could potentially add in another layer if you wanted to do those extra calculations. So that's for stat types. Next, we're going to go into the attribute list. Now this is going to be things like our level, strength, agility, intelligence. And then our last one is going to be called attributes available. That's going to be the value of just whatever we gain a level, we'll be able to have some type of stored value so we can decide on how to allocate to strength, agility, intelligence. So essentially when you gain a level, you could be like gain three stat points and then you can choose to put them all into strength, agility, intelligence, if you want to add that option. So we're gonna go ahead, add in those four. We're gonna have level. We'll have strength, agility, and then this is gonna be attributes available. Actually, we'll do attributes, attribute points. And then those are going to be the, oh, we missed one actually. Intelligence. There we go. So we'll have our level. We'll have strength, agility, intelligence. So the three attributes with our levels, the overhead, and then just some allocation points. Now we're going to have our stats. These are essentially all of the values that our three main stats will influence. So we're gonna do a ton here. Level is gonna be influencing max XP. It's also going to be influencing XP. Strength will influence max health. And health. Agility will influence attack. We will also have armor, which won't be influenced by anything. So it will only be affected by items. And then we'll have max mana, mana, and mana regen, which those three will be influenced by intelligence. And then next, we are going to do, 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 oh. So we have the add, subtract, and set. And that's going to be the four enums that we all have available that we're going to be using. Next, we're going to get on to the next step. So that's the end of step one. Now for step two, we're going to create our structures. There's going to be a total of three that we need to create. So we're going to go ahead and do struct. We're going to go ahead and close out these enums. Now for a brand new structure. The first one we're going to do is called single stat. This is going to be representing a individual stat that we have added. And we're going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to do a single attribute. This is for that overhead attributes. And then next is going to be our player attributes. So player attributes. This is essentially going to be containing every single stat value. So we're gonna put it all into one single structure. So we'll go ahead and open this up. This will actually contain the single attribute and it's gonna be an array. And this is just gonna be called attributes. So the player attributes will just contain all of these attributes combined. We'll get back to it in a moment, but now we're going to go into our single stat. And within our single stat, there's a few things we're going to need to add. So we're going to go ahead and click this a couple times. 
The first one is going to be the name of the stat. That's going to be the stat list that we created. So the names are essentially going to represent those enums that we made. Next is going to be our default value. We'll also have our bonus and total. And then this one is going to be optional, but this is going to be a scale value. So depending on how you want to scale things, you can choose to use this. This is going to just be a float value, which will set. And then throughout the game, it's just going to scale based on that. If you want to do more calcu more calculations with your scaling, uh, later in the video, we'll be able to go over where we add that in. And then you can swap that out for your calculations. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it very simple. We're just going to use a single value. So we're also going to change all of these to floats as such. So that's going to be our single stat. Next, we're going to go into our single attribute. So we're going to add a bunch here. Now for this one is going to be the attribute list. And that is also going to be the name of the attribute. And then similar to the single stat, we're also going to have the default. We're going to have the bonus and total. And then we're also going to have a value, which is can upgrade. This will decide if this attribute will be able to upgrade manually. So when we get those extra points, we're going to choose if we can actually allocate them here. That way we don't accidentally try to like increase our level, which would be pretty odd. Uh, if you gain a level, then you just add a point to the level, then you just have an infinite glitch. And then we're going to have our stats inherit. And this is going to be an array of all of our single stats. So we're going to change here. And what this means is that whenever our attributes gains any amount, we will also adjust our stats that inherit from here. So for example, if we gain two strength, then we'll also make sure we're gaining X amount of health along the way as well as if we subtract we want to make sure that we subtract as well so that the attribute stays dynamic so let's go ahead and change these to our float variables and then that one is going to stay as a bool and then now that we have those two set up we can close those and we're going to go back to our player attributes now for here we want to adjust the default values this allows us to set what the base value should be for everything that way, whenever you add it in, you don't really have to worry about uh, manually entering in everything. So we're going to go ahead, click this, I think about five times. Our first one is going to be level. We're going to set the default to one. And then also make sure to set the total to the same as the default. That just helps a lot easier. You can update it manually on your own, but this just makes it easier. We're going to choose not to upgrade because that'd be very weird, like we said. Next, we're gonna have max XP. I'm gonna set the default XP amount to 100, to 100. And then we'll say that every level is gonna scale off of 50. And then next, we're gonna have XP. And then XP will have no values. It's gonna stay at zero because we'll adjust it and it's gonna end up equaling out to max XP. So we can go ahead, close that out. Next, for strength, I'm going to just set this to one. Or actually, I'm going to set those to one and then the total of two. And then we're going to have it can upgrade because when we gain a level, we do want to be able to increase strength if we choose to do so. Next is going to be our max health and our health. So we're going to do 100 here, 100, and we'll gain 50. And the same thing, 100, 150. So we also just want to make sure that the health and the max health are scaling the same. If you're doing this method of scaling, you want to make sure it's the same. Otherwise, uh, you'll end up having some inconsistencies, which would be very annoying to debug later. So we're going to go ahead, go into agility. We're going to do the exact same thing, 1, 1, 2. It can upgrade. 
And then this is just gonna be attack. I'm gonna say we're gonna start off with five attack and then we'll have a total of five. And then we'll say we gain one per level. Also bear in mind, if you set a value here, depending on the scaling that you set, it will also increase your attack. So for example, agility is gonna be at one, which means it will also increase by one. So technically, once we start the game, this attack is gonna end up to six. So just bear in mind, if this has a value, it will increase these values. That is how the system is gonna be set up. Next, we're gonna go into intelligence. It can upgrade. We're gonna do the exact same thing, one, one, and a total of two. This has three inherited values. We're gonna have max mana, mana, and mana regen. We're gonna do basically half the amount of health just to make it easier. So 50, 50, and then a total of 50. And we're gonna scale this with 25. And we'll just repeat the amounts here. And for mana regen, I'm gonna say the default is just gonna be at one with a total of one and we'll just increase it by 0 0.5 per level. And last we're gonna have is the attribute points. And then by default, I'm gonna set it at zero. I'm not gonna allow any at the beginning. However, if you want to allocate some at level one, you could say three. And then when they start the game, they'll have three points. I'm gonna set it at zero. And with that, that completes step two. And then next, we're gonna move into the functions. Moving into step three, we're gonna now create our actor component. So we're gonna go blueprint class, actor component, and we'll call this stat system. And inside here, the first thing we want to do, well, aside from deleting tick, is we're gonna create a variable, which is gonna be our attributes. This is gonna store all of our attributes, which is going to be that player attribute structure we created. And if we hit compile, we then see all the default values appear here that we have entered in. So we have all have it available as well as these stats. So the default values are there, which saves us so much time. Next, we're gonna go into all of the functions we wanna create. There are two functions we need to create in the beginning. So we'll start with the first one. From here, this is going to be the get attribute ref. So that's short for reference. And what we need to do here is that when we're looking for a specific, a specific attribute, we'll be able to find it. All of our attributes are inside this structure. So if we were to break this off, we then have an array of attributes, which we would then loop through. And within this, then we get all the single attributes. So if we broke this out, we see the name here. So we need to compare this name with the one we're looking for. So we'll go ahead, add in an input here, and we'll just call this attribute. This is going to be attribute list. And from in here, we'll then do equal. Make sure it's the enum equal because the input is in fact an enum. And we're gonna plug that in with attribute like so. And this will tell us, okay, so if they are in fact equal, branch, if this is true, we'll return this function. So it's saying, hey, we found it now. Now, once we have found it, we wanna pass along the information we actually found. So for here, well, first I'm gonna get rid of all the unconnected pins just to make it a little neater. I'm gonna move this down a little. We wanna save the structure and the index. So we're gonna go ahead, local variable and local variable, plug these in. Make this a little neater. And I'm gonna rename this to attribute value. And I'm gonna rename this to attribute index. And then within this, we're gonna have 
two pins to plug in. We're just gonna do this and plug in. And oop, plug in. I'm gonna do return and index return. Uh, put attribute at the end of return, like so. There we go. So like that, when we find the value we want, it will end up returning and we're all good to move on from here. Now, since we have found how to get the reference, we now need to collect the value. So we're gonna get attribute value. And for getting the value, we need to first grab that reference and then we need to pass along the information we want. So for the inputs, we're gonna go ahead and create two inputs. First one is gonna be type. Type is gonna be used a lot of the time. For essentially every single function we use, it's gonna have type just so that we know if we're using the default, bonus, and total. So attribute list is correct, but now we need stat type. From here, we're gonna get attribute reference, like so. And then we're also gonna turn this into a pure function because we don't need that execution pin because we're not changing information. So we're gonna break this up. For here, we actually only need the float values because we're only gonna pass along the float values. So we're gonna disconnect this and then we're gonna just get those floats. And then from here, we now need to decide which value to pass along. So we do have the type that we are choosing. Now you could do something like a switch, which you would go through and then plug all these in, or you can actually do a select. And select allows us to plug in variables like so. So depending on what the enum is, we'll decide on which one to send. And I'm just gonna do negative one for here. We're not actually gonna do anything with it, but just for visibility. And then from here, we just plug that directly. And now we can get the value depending on what we're looking for. So if we were to bring this in, we can then say, hey, I'm looking for the bonus value of intelligence. And then you re can return it. We're also gonna turn this into a pure function because we're not changing values. So there's no need to have the execution pins. Next, we're gonna create our modify attribute. So this is modify attribute. This is gonna be our main function this is what you'll call whenever you are changing any values. So whenever you are adjusting an attribute, you will be using this function. So for here, we're gonna have four inputs. We'll have operation. We'll have the type attribute and value. So we're gonna go ahead, change these to their appropriate one, operations. Type is correct. We need the attribute list. And then this is gonna be a float value. So from here, what we wanna do first is that based upon the type, we'll do a switch. And the reason we're doing a switch here is because if we're ever at a none, we want to print a string to tell us, hey, you messed up, go back, Take a look. So we'll do return. And we're gonna add a warning. This is so that the text turns yellow when you're in the output log. And then we'll just say modify attributes. I'm gonna do shift enter for new line and say error stat is set to none. And then we have that return just so it just sends back. It would send back anyways, but it's for that cleanliness. Next, what we need to do is 
for the default and bonus, they will actually do the exact same thing. So we're actually gonna drag off here. And let's see, actually we'll need to create a new function first. This is going to be our set stat. So this function is gonna be called within the modify once we have the value to pass along. So we're gonna go ahead, do three inputs. We're gonna do type, stat, and value. Go ahead and do stat type. And we'll do, 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 do stat, er, sorry, attribute list. And then we also need to do our do, do, do value, which is a float. And I just realized I called this set stat. My apologies, this is stat attribute. We're modifying attributes. And then from the here, we're gonna do get attribute reference. Essentially what we need to do is that when we have a new value, we now need to pass along that value and then save it within this entire variable. Now, when we do a get variable or get attribute reference, we only get the reference for it. We're not able to change it. So what we need to do is instead of trying to get get attribute later on, we're gonna then promote this to a local variable. We're gonna save these. And just like before, these are going to be the local attribute. And this is gonna be a local index. Just using local for here. And then we could delete that because we're not gonna use that. But now what we need to do is that based upon the type we're using, we'll then do a series of different modifications. So we're gonna grab that type. And we'll do another switch, plug that in here. And then depending if it is our default, we are going to modify to, to, to let's see our local attribute set member. So depending on if we're doing default bonus or total, we're going to choose whether we are going to modify either the default, the bonus or the total. Now for the total, total is going to get modified whenever you change the default and the bonus. So we're just going to add that calculation right there so that we don't have to run this a second time. So when changing the default value, we're not going to be changing the bonus. And by doing the set member, we can choose only to change certain variables. That just saves us a lot of time so that you don't have to like break this out and then also make the same thing again. So if you did like make, you don't have to like plug everything in. Just saves us some time. So I'm gonna plug that in. And then now what we're going to do is we need to calculate based upon the new value, how we're gonna add the default and the total. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy this over here. And we're gonna break this. And what we need to do for the total is to combine the default value and the bonus. So all I need is the bonus. And what I'll do is I'll add So if I put this on top and we'll be adding this new value, we'll be setting this to. So we'll just type in value here. Just keeping it nice and condensed, just so it's a lot easier to deal with. All right. So now that we are adding our default value, and our bonus value, this is gonna be the total. 
But what I also want to do is I'm going to use a clamp. And this is so that if you're ever at zero, that you just stay and you don't go into the negatives. Now, if you want to support negative values in your stats, you don't have to use a clamp. The alternative you could do is that if you want to set a minimum or maximum yourself, let's say you only want to allow up to a thousand uh, of a value for your attributes, you can promote this to a variable such as max, and then you could set the default value to a thousand. And then that means that you can only go up to that and then you're done, no more. And then you can just plug that in to the total. So you could do that. I'm not gonna set a max. I'm just gonna set it to like some insane number. But you do have that option. You could do the same thing for the minimum. But I'm also gonna do the exact same thing for the default value. So if I actually do this and move that over, this value that we're getting from setting is going to be the default directly. So we're gonna plug this into here and then plug that into here. And then this goes into default. So like that, we're able to take the current value and then we'll set it and change it to the default. Now I know within the modify attribute, we haven't did any type of math yet to change this. We'll get to that in a bit, but we do need the set attribute first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up, copy and paste, plug that in here. And then from here, in order to support doing the bonus, we just need to make some changes. So before it was bonus, and then now we wanna change this to default so that it's bonus plus default. And then you plug that in here. And then for setting the new value, instead of setting it to the default, we set it to the bonus. So you just make that switch super easy. And then for the total, we'll actually just do a print string. And this is just going to be another error. So warning, and then we'll do set attribute. Error cannot use total. And then we'll just do a return just so that we have that extra warning that, hey, we messed up. And now that we have both of those set, next, let me align this because I just like things to be lined up. Now that we have set the new value, we now need to change our attribute with this value. So what we'll do is we're gonna do break and then set array element. Let me move this down, plug that in here. And we're gonna plug in those two variables that we saved at the beginning. So we have the local attribute and the index. And then from here, we'll just add another pin, plug that in, and then we're gonna do a return. So that allows us to modify the attribute with any new changes that we do. And we also set that there is a minimum of zero just so nothing actually drops below zero. So now that we got that set up, let's get back into the modify attribute. So over here, we can set this. Now we have to do all of the math in order to calculate based upon, okay, are we going to be adding a certain amount of value? Are we subtracting a certain amount, et cetera? So we're gonna do get attribute value. We're gonna get the type. We're gonna get the stat. Uh, attribute, my bad, mixing up myself. Let's move this over here. And then based upon what we are doing, we'll have to then do, are we gonna add? Are we gonna subtract? Or are we going to set? So value. 
and from here we'll be able to decide based upon the operation we choose. So if we were to drop in a modify attribute, if we're going to add, we want to choose add. If we want to subtract, we're going to choose subtract. And if we want to set, we're going to set with this value that we specify. So from here, we'll do that by grabbing in the operation that we set up. We'll do a select, and this will allow us to choose the different options. So by going into here, we want to add, subtract, and set. And then now we also need to make sure we pass along the current values. So we're just going to do this. So we are adding the new value with the current value, or we are subtracting the current value with the new value, plugging that in. And then from here, we plug that in. And we also just do type. And we also do attribute like so. Now I'm going to move all of this up just for cleanliness. I like to keep things neat. And then I'm actually going to just put this on top and I'll put that on bottom. And we'll move this over, plug it in here. And the default and bonus will do the exact same thing. They calculate the same, so you don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to just have a return node at the end over here. You don't have to do all these return nodes, but I like to. It just makes it easy for me to know the endpoints. Now, the last thing is to do the last condition for total. Total kind of has to have its own math because we need to check for, hey, when we add, we want to make sure we're adding to a specific value. Or if we are subtracting, we want to make sure we subtract from bonus first, then the default. So you're always taking away the bonus values. So from here, we need a brand new function, which is going to be the operate, oop, I didn't capitalize, operate total attribute. This just lets us know that we are now doing some operations within the total. For here, we're going to have, I don't know why I did that, three more, which is operation attribute and value. So I'm going to change this to operation. And then this is going to be a float. So just like before, we'll do a switch. And then we are going to decide on how we add, subtract, and set. Now you could choose your own type of methods for adding here. So like if you wanted to specifically add to bonus or if you wanted to split it to bonus and default, you can do that. For me, I'm just going to do so that if you tried to add using total. So for example, if you set to type total right here, it will then decide, okay, we're going to add to the default value first. So for here, I'm going to change this to default. And then we're going to plug in the attribute and the value. Plug in here and plug in here. So now, super simple. Whenever you try to add to total, it's just actually going to say, hey, go into total, uh, go into add the default. Now for the subtraction, there's a lot more math to do there. So before we do that, for the set, we're gonna do another print string just to say, hey, you fucked up again. So operate total uh, attribute, new line, unable to set total value. And that just gives us a nice little warning. Now for the subtract, what we need to do is that first, we want to subtract from our bonus. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that bonus can actually be subtracted from. So we're gonna do that calculation, get attribute value, bonus, and then we want to subtract 
the new value from here. And if this new value is still above zero, then we know we only need to subtract from the bonus. So if you get the current value, let's say you're at 10 um, attribute, and then you subtract five, you know this is still gonna be above zero. So you don't need to subtract from anything else other than the bonus. Now, if you're subtracting 10, and then you only have five attribute, then you know that, hey, I need to subtract from bonus, and then I also have to subtract from default. So math joys. This was absolute blast trying to figure out in my brain. So I hope you appreciate the fact that I did this for you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and branch this out. So now we know that if this is in fact true, we only have to change the bonus. So we're gonna do modify bonus and then plug in the attribute. And then I'm going to go ahead and do subtract and we'll just plug in the value. So from here, now we will go into doing the false, which is, okay, subtract from bonus and the default. So we'll go ahead, copy, paste two of these, because we're gonna have to do this twice. However, for the first one, we are going to subtract from the bonus. But what we want to do is we just want to make sure that this equals to zero. So the best way to subtract into zero is to subtract from itself. And that just means we're going to get attribute value, bonus, and we're just going to subtract it into here. So we're gonna take the current value and subtract it. So even if we're at zero, we'll subtract from zero, which means no change. But what I also want to do is that I want to also make sure that when we are subtracting from the default, like so, that we can have this information and calculate how much to subtract. So we'll store this to a local variable. We're gonna call this stored value. Plug that in here, and we'll do that instead. So like so, we can now be like, we're subtracting from you, and then over here, we'll grab the stored value, subtract, so that we get the amount left, and pass it along. This is essentially saying we have now a total of 10, and let's say our bonus had five, so we subtract five from the new value, and then we get five remaining, and then we subtract. So super simple, but that just makes it a bit easier. And I'm also gonna condense this a little by moving it over here, and then we'll also move this along here. So that allows us to work with all three of the operations if you wanted to subtract from the total. And then I like to just do a little condensing like so. We're gonna go back into modify attribute and we'll drag this off. Plug this in here. I'm gonna move things over and move this up. And let's go ahead and pass along all the values. Attribute. And essentially, you can decide how to manage your total. You can choose to never subtract from total or never um, add from total, whatever you want to do. All you would have to do is change how you do these pins and the calculations here. I decided on what default ones I wanted to do, but that's where you could modify it. So we're gonna go back over here. And then now we can just do a nice return. 
and then let's get a little bit of space just so that it stays different, but still a bit condensed. And then last but not least, let's organize our stuff. So we're gonna go ahead, do attributes. We'll do a bar. And then we're gonna do getter. And this will allow us to have, come on, can I highlight all of this? There we go. A nice organization. We're gonna go into here. And then for this, we'll do function. This will be a setter. And then this will actually just be a function. So like that, we now have all of the attribute functions. Now it did take a bit for this section. The next one will actually be even longer. It's gonna be very similar, but there's more functions and more additions we need to do for the stats themselves. Because again, we have to scale the stats and the stats are within attributes. So a lot more math to do there. Hey, so me from the future, I realized with the attribute, I skipped over an important part where we need to connect this minimum float of the total into the second attribute that we are calculating with. So for the default and the bonus show here, this is mainly so that after we add in, we want to make sure that this actually never goes below the current bonus value because you never want to have like, let's say five bonus, but um, the total ends up coming out to be less than five because that'd be very awkward. And that's mainly because we are doing the clamp after we do the addition. Uh, so if the clamp was for this value was actually before, then we wouldn't have to set the minimum. But because of the way that it's set up, make sure you set minimum. But that completes our step three. Now let's get on to step four. So step four, we're gonna be doing all of the stat functionalities. So how we had all of the attributes, we're now going to go ahead and create here. I'm gonna set this just to stats from the beginning, but we're gonna create very similar functionalities. So we want to get the get stat ref, and then we also want the get stat value, and we're gonna start there. So both of these are gonna be underneath the category of the getters. Oop, let me make a space there, getters. And then I'm just gonna drag that one inside as well. All right, so the building blocks are gonna be roughly the same. However, when it comes to getting the stat reference, it's gonna be a little different compared to the attributes. So if I close these and I open up the get stat reference, we'll be able to see how we end up going through this attribute and then we find what we want. Now the thing is with an attribute, they actually have all the stats underneath, which is gonna require us to do essentially another loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this, going back into the get stat ref, pasting, I'm gonna go ahead and promote these to local variables. And I am going to remove this. Because what we're gonna do is we're not getting an attribute, we're getting a stat. So we wanna make sure that we're searching for the right piece of information. So we can go ahead and stat. Uh, ooh, let's be a little bit more specific. Stat list, there we go. And what we do is, since we're saving the attribute that's available, we need to break this attribute. And what we need is just this inherited stats. And then we gotta loop through all of them. It's a very, very fun time. So we're looping and then we have to loop again. And then now we'll be able to see those single stats that are available to which it's gonna be the same thing as we did before where we break this off and we just want that name. And then now we could do the comparison to make sure that they're the same. So we're gonna go ahead and type stat, go all the way to the bottom. 
And then we're going to do that equal enum, plug that in, and then we can branch. And then just like for we want to promote this information into local variables, local variable, and plug this in as such. And then we got the, let's call this stat ref, and then stat, no, no, no. Actually, we're just going to do index and local stat. And I'll show you why in a moment. And then now when we do a return, I'm going to go ahead and change these names to just ATT for attribute for short. And the reason I'm doing that is that when I pull in, oops, all of these in. And then I'm gonna plug it in like so. And now I can do like return attributes. And then we can do attributes index. We could do return stat and then stat index. Originally, I was going to use stat index, but because I ended up wanting to use it in the return node, I just left that as index. I mean, I could probably just change this to like local index. Oh, it doesn't even let me. I'm not sure why, but anyways. So that allows us to return. So if we end up getting our get stat reference, Oop, let's turn it into a pure. We can now return the attribute as well as the index for the attribute and then the stat and its index. So we have all the necessary information that we need to get saved. And then now we're gonna go on to the get, oop, let me close this, get stat value. This is gonna be pretty simple. It's actually gonna be about just as simple as the last one. We'll do type as usual, and then stat. Get stat ref. So that has all that information. We're gonna break this just like we did before. We're gonna keep only the float variables. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and we need that type. We'll do a select. And then now we just plug in play. Oop. Oop. And then return. And plug that in. And then I'll just do negative one. I want to actually actually use a negative one, but you could specify like a really large number in case you ever wanted to check. Or you could do like a, a bool so that if it is none, then return false or whatever the case is. Now we're going to go into the next functions, which instead of doing the gets, we're now going to work on doing that modify stat instead of modify attribute. The stat one is going to be slightly different because there's a lot more work we need to do for stats uh, because they're underneath all of those uh, attributes. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, didn't mean to close that. From here, we do modify stat. Now for the modify stat, we're gonna have very similar stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead, add all of these in. We need that operation so that we know what we're doing here. We also need the type. We're gonna need that stat. Change this to stat list. And then that value. And this is gonna be a float. All right. And then we're gonna do the same thing as before. We do a switch. I'm actually gonna go into that other one. I'm gonna copy this, go back into modify stat, paste, mainly because I'm lazy and I just want to change 
this stat. And then I could just throw that up there. Don't have to worry about it. Now, the next thing we have to do is we need to essentially mo modify the stats just like we did before. So we got to create that set stat function, which is going to be similar ish to the set attribute. So we're going to go ahead, work on this. It's going to be set stat. And for the set stat, we're going to have the one, two, and three. The bottom one is going to be that value. We're going to have that stat. And then we're going to have the type. So just constantly passing along that type. Got to be more specific. And then we can have stat list. All right. So let me go ahead, close the modify attribute attribute and we're going to copy some of the functionalities from the set attribute so we're going to work with similar things but we're going to be using different structures so we can't really do the same and then at the end we have to do something different because for stats you can't just add it into the array element because it's within this array and then it's within those individual stats or individual attributes so lots of math going on here. So we're gonna get stat reference. Now we have the two, two, two. We're gonna save this because we need to have a reference to the stat. This is gonna be that local stat. Oh, why is it not working? Maybe hit compile, local stat. Um, I think Unreal Engine's being a little odd here. So we're going to go ahead and use something else. And we'll just call it stat ref. And then we're going to go ahead and get that type. We're going to switch. And then now from here, we're going to do very similar math with the set attribute. We're gonna to wanna to do all of this mumbo jumbo. Going back over here. Plugging that over here. And we're gonna replace this stuff with the stat ref. So we're gonna go up here, gonna break. I only need the bonus. And then let's just make sure I plug into the right options, which are over here. And then I can remove this. It helps that we have all this built out. So we could do a lot less work. Set member. I need default in total. And let's go ahead and remove that. This goes into default and this goes into here. So like that, we were able to copy and paste. And now we're going to do the same thing over here. Oh, hey, come on, plug in. And let's make the old switcheroo. And the old switcheroo. I'm going to move this back a little. Okay. And then I also want to get this error message because if we can copy and not have to do work, then we should do it. Set stat. Uh, let's error cannot. There we go. All right. So that gives us roughly how to set that up. Now we have to handle on the next part. So we need to now have the ability to set the information. So we have it all stored within this structure. We've made the changes. Now we need to go into that actual stat and then we need to be able to save it. So 
unlike this, we can't just go into the array. So we're going to create a new function, which is going to be set stat member. And within this, it's going to take a lot of the, oops, where did it go? Set stat. It's going to take a lot of the inputs for the get stat ref. So what we'll want to do is that for do, 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 stat member, we're going to do type. And we'll do stat type. Go back over here. We're going to go ahead and do stat member. Plug that in, plug in here, plug in here, and move over. So since it's going to be taking a lot of these inputs, instead of going through all of this and then plugging in each individual one, we're gonna do that. And then we're also going to do one more input, which is going to be that single stat attribute that we have here. So we're going to go into here, and then we essentially need to be able to plug this in. So this is a single stat. So we're going to go single stat here. And then we're going to go with, uh, we'll just call it single stat. And then we'll plug that in as such. And we go into here. And what we need is a get stat ref. Oh, sorry. Get stat ref. Am I doing type? Oh, sorry, sorry. Not type. It's the stat list. Getting mixed up with these stats. There we go. And then stat. Now we can plug this in, call that stat. Perfect. Okay. Now we have all the references that we need. And then we're going to go ahead, save this to a local. Call this the stat index. And then we are going to go ahead and return or take the return attribute. We're going to break this. And then we only want the stats that are inside of here. So we already have the index, so we can always pull that information. Now we're going to go ahead and take this array and promote that to another local variable. This is just going to be the stat array. So when we modify this, we can then pass it back into this attribute. And then this attribute is actually going to go back into this value here. So we're going to kind of play like a huge chain of going down the road, plugging in, and then going back up the chain to make sure everything saves. So now that we've done that, we now want to go set array element within this array. We now want this stat index like so. And then this item is going to be the single stat that we're passing along as such. And then now within here, we've set the array. We need to now plug it back in. So we're going to go ahead, break this out from here. We're going to do a get. We want that stat index. I guess this should be attribute index, actually. Attribute index. Already in use, already in use. I mean, whatever. All right. Stat index is fine. Now we're going to go into set members. Plug it into here. 
expose that and we're gonna plug in our array. So we're kind of going back up that chain. Things are going along, it's working. And then now that we have all that set, we're now gonna do a set array oh, element. Gonna go ahead, plug that back in. Plug this in, and then we're gonna plug that in. And then now we'll be able to return. Right, so what we do is we break it off. We set the attribute index. It bothers me that that index is saying there. And then we plug into the array. We set our new single stat that we put in. And then we shove it right back into the player attributes. And then we save it here. So now we can go back into the set stat. We have this set. And with that, we can now return here. Go back into modify stat, back up the chain, and we're gonna plug in the modify stat. Sorry, not modify stat, set stat. And then we also plug that in here, move that over. I'm gonna go into the modify attribute. I'm gonna copy this part because we're gonna be using basically the same logic. We're just changing it a little. So we'll do stat. type and then instead of this part we're actually going to put in here get stat value turn that into a pure plug that into here gonna get that stat and move it here boom boom So like that, we now have the set stat here. And now we just have to handle the total. All right. So now let's go ahead and create the operate, operate total stat. which is gonna be similar to here. We're just gonna do some replacements. So I'm taking this. Let me close the attribute ones just so you can see the tabs that are available. Moving that over, plug that in. So set is not gonna work. So we already have the error message. Let's just go ahead and change this to stat. And let's add in our input so stuff starts working again. I'm gonna call this operation. Operation. Call this stat. And value. And then now let's go ahead and just replace all of these errors with their copy. Let's also promote that to a local so that we have that available. So I am going to categorize this a little better and we're gonna do stats function. I'm gonna also move this into stat function. And then this is going to be stats setters. 
And then I'm also going to put that one in there as well. Bit more organized, just does a little cleanup work for us. So add works great. We are going to be using the type of default and then value works. I'm not sure why it's not working here, but that's fine. So we're going to just type in value, plug that in, delete here. Bam. All right. So we have that here. Since I already have the modify stat, I'm going to copy here so that I can paste it in. Next, I'm going to also replace all of these values. It's a lot easier when you don't have to do everything all at once. You could just rebuild with similar functions. I don't actually need to plug that in. Okay, so we're subtracting from bonus. So we're just going to copy exactly what we're doing. And then we're going to drag that down. And then now we want the get stat value stat and bonus. And essentially what I'm trying to show you guys is that it's this is the process that you would go through if you wanted to add in another layer. You're basically making similar type of functionalities. You're just adjusting the enum and functions that you're using within that layer. It would require creating a new layer of functions, of course, but that is essentially what the process would be like. Okay, so you got subtract and default, and then you have subtract and then bonus. Plug that in, plug that in, and we'll do that. And then next, instead of this, we're gonna plug into here. And as such, I think we have one error somewhere. Yeah. Perfect. So with the operation, plug that in, make sure that's all working. When we are adding, we're going to add the default value. So if you select total, total is going to go straight into the default and then we go into checking hey our bonus will it actually equal to zero when subtracting if it doesn't meaning that there's enough of our bonus stat then we will just subtract from there and then if it will in fact be lower than zero we're going to make sure our bonus stat hits the zero value and then we also want to make sure that we subtract the remaining amount into our default value so that we are doing the most, <clears throat> doing all of the subtraction needed. So now that we have that set, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one and this one, going back into the modify stats. And from here, what we want to do is add in that operate Total stat, plug that in, operation, stat, and value. And then we'll do a return. So with that, we end up having very similar functions. <clears throat> just required a bit extra effort. So I'm actually going to clean this up a little, moving that over. And that will cover the base functions that we need for our stat. 
we ended up having an extra function compared to the other one, but we have the reference value modify total set, and then we have that extra set stat member. So that actually went a lot quicker than I thought because of the copy and pasting instead of just rebuilding it all from scratch. So yeah, with that, that concludes this part. For step five, we're going to be going into scaling our stats. So whenever we gain attributes, we'll also be able to gain our stats, as well as other type of conditional situations, such as reaching max XP or getting to zero health, things like that. And then you can expand into other ways that you may want to use it. For here, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new function. It's going to be our scaling stats. I'm going to drag this into the attribute function add a new input and then what we're going to want to add is the stat type let's add about three more we're going to add the operation this is just add subtract all that other mumbo jumbo we also want to add in the attribute but this is actually going to be the single attribute. We're gonna be passing along the specific attribute that we're using. And then we also want the value, which is just gonna be a float. From here, we wanna take all of the stats that are available, which is why we want the single attribute. We want all these inherited stats. We're gonna loop through all of them. From here, you break this off. And the only one we're not using is the total because the total is the combined count of default and bonus. Depending on the type that we have, we're going to choose either default or bonus. So we're going to grab type, scroll to the bottom, do select, plug that in as such. And then we're also going to need to choose based upon, are we going to add, subtract, or if we're just going to set the value. Depending on this operation, like we did previously, we're gonna choose plugin, plugin. And then afterwards, what we want to make sure is that this value always stops at zero. So I don't want to support negative numbers. I've mentioned this a few times, but I'm not going to support it. So I'm going to clamp everything at zero with some large number. And then we're going to do a set stat. And this is when we can put in the type. And this is also where we can put in the stat over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and promote this, plug that in. Uh, let's move this down actually. So that I can move this down. We'll just do local stat or stat local, whatever you wanna name it. Plug that in. Like so. Now let's go ahead and handle the actual math. For me, it's super simple. We're only gonna be multiplying based upon the scale because that is just the way that I designed this. I'm doing a very, very simple calculations. When we gain a level, we're just gonna scale up for anyone that wants to do something a bit more complicated. So if you're trying to maybe do some significantly more math, like multiplying and adding other values, then this is where you wanna create either another type of pure function to do calculations, or you can replace this entire process, whatever you want to do. And then from there, you plug in like so. And then we also want to plug in like so. And that'll just pass along our value with our scale. And it just sets that over here. 
back to our attribute. After we set our attribute, this is where we want to add in the scaling. So we're gonna throw that in. We're gonna do the type. We also need the operation. And then we also need to get attribute reference. Like so. And from here, we actually need to scale based upon not just this value. We need to also make sure that we are scaling appropriately. So if our attribute reaches zero, we don't want to decrease our other stats because the attribute hits zero. So if your health itself has a certain amount of value, you don't want to decrease it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do a select float. And depending on how much our attribute is, as well as what the outcome of this select turns out to be, will depend on what we do. So we're going to go ahead, promote this to a local variable. This is going to be, I, I don't know, ATT float. And this is going to be the calculation float. And I guess I could just plug that in right there. I'm going to drag both of these off. And what we want to check to see if this calculation float is less than zero. So less than zero. Um, actually, sorry, greater than zero. And then we plug that in. So if this end result is more than zero, we're going to just continue with passing along this value into our scaling. However, if this is below zero, we only want to plug in the remaining amount of our attribute. We never want to go into the negatives when scaling because then you just start losing all your stats. So we're essentially zeroing out any type of benefit our attributes are giving to its underlying stats without zeroing out all of our values. So that will allow us to scale up our stats and manage all of those use cases. Next, we need to handle is our health, XP, all of those functions. So we're going to go ahead and do a check, sorry, custom event. We're going to do a check health. From here, what we want to do is check to make sure that our current health, if it reaches zero, do something. So we're going to go ahead, grab oop, here, here. take our total values of health and max health. And we do total because we don't want to say the player's dead if they have bonus health still, because then it means they still have health values. So we want to check uh, if this is gray or sorry, you could do less or equal. I don't really support negative numbers, as I've, I think I've mentioned quite enough, but in case you do support, you want to do less than or equal. And then from here, what I'm going to do is just do a dispatcher called on death. And I'm gonna call it. And this will just tell anybody that's listening that, hey, our player is dead. Now, if you do in fact support negative numbers, what you would want to do is that you want to use the set stats and you want to change your health to zero 
And then you also want to make sure you set your other values to zero as well so that your total comes out to zero. Just so that you support that use case. I don't really need it within the system, but I do know that some people may be supporting negative numbers with other stat values. Now for the other scenario, which is our health reached our max health, we need to check to see if this is greater than our current health. So we'll branch this out. So if our health is greater than max health, we want to set our health to our max health. So we're going to go ahead and set both our default and our bonus health and health. We're going to go ahead and get our stat values, like so. And we're going to make sure that the types match. And that way we just hit that max values. And the reason we're doing set and not modify is because if we do modify, you'll end up with an endless loop of always checking your health. And then let's say you are in fact exceeding it just will infinitely loop in crash. So we don't want that. Now, we have that scenario checked. We're gonna go ahead, copy this. We're gonna do check mana. And now check mana, you don't actually die when you lose mana. So I don't need that. And I'm not going to do anything when my mana actually reaches zero. So I'm going to delete this branch as well. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down. And then we're going to change this all to mana. Max mana. Make sure that's max mana. Like so, and we're going to go ahead and condense all this. Perfect. Now, when our mana reaches max mana, we just set it to the max values and we're all good to go. The next one we're going to do is our XP. We're going to go ahead and check XP for us. Since we clamp the value at zero, we also don't need to worry about getting below zero because it's just not going to happen here. So let's change this to max XP, oops, sorry, XP and then max XP. And then for here, we're actually going to do a bit differently. We need to increase our level. But we also want to make sure that we don't lose any extra XP we gain. So if our max XP is 100 and we end up getting to about 150 XP, we want to make sure that we keep that extra 50. So what we would do is we would end up doing the set stat and we want to take that remainder and plug it in. So we're going to do a set subtract we're going to plug that in as such and what we want to do as well is that instead of greater than we want to do greater or equal to for xp it needs to be different because we do satisfy a condition when we reach that max value so it's important for us when it comes to xp and then we also know that this is always going to be a positive number or a zero. So it'll never harm us for subtracting. And we're also going to change this to XP. So if our XP is ever more than max XP or equal to the same, this is either going to be zero or it's going to be a positive number. And then lastly, we're going to modify the attribute. And this is going to be for our level. So we want to increase this by one. 
And what this would do is that it's going to increase our level. And then at the end of it, it will scale our max XP and it will run the check XP again. The reason why this is after the set stat is because let's say you actually gained more than one level with the XP you gained. That means it'll actually run this as many times until you reach the XP. So you can gain more than one level at, at a time. That's basically what that sums up to. So back to modify attribute. After our scaling stats, we now need to add in our conditional checks, which is going to be our conditional stance. The one input is going to be a stat list. Stat and switch. And this is going to be where we can plug in any type of conditions which is the check XP, check health, and check mana. Now, if you have other conditions, you can go ahead and satisfy them here, create your own functions and modify accordingly to whatever best fits you. And we wanna be able to add this at the important points within all of our functions. We want to make sure we only call it at the necessary parts. So within modified step attribute, what comes after with our stats is the scaling stats. And whenever we scale our stats, we want to check to make sure that our stat is actually reaching those values. And it will do with every single stat that actually upgrades so you are checking all of them. So for attributes, the scaling stats is where we want to put it. It's also where we can find the direct link to a stat. While if you're in any other functions, you don't actually reference them directly. Then we wanna go into our modify stat. And we're actually just gonna put it at the end of this one. Because for our stats, you're modifying your stats, you have direct links and we'll do stat. As well as we're gonna move this into the function section. Last but not least, there's one thing we haven't done yet with our leveling. We have gained a level, and now we need to make sure that we get our attribute points. So into our modify attribute, we need to add a, another check where we are going to make sure that our attribute is equal to level. We also need to make sure that what we are operating equal, you could do the numbers if you remember the numbers because technically both of these would be zero. We also want to make sure we're only adding. And the reason for that is you never want to add attribute points if you are subtracting a level. I don't know if you're going to support losing levels, but if you do, you just want to make sure. And then from here is another branch. And this is when we're going to call our level up function. So we're going to make a new function, level up. Drag that into the function section. And we're gonna do a modify attribute. Default attribute points. And I'm gonna say you can gain three. Back into modify attribute. We're gonna throw that bad boy back in. And then now we can check so that if we gained a level, we will actually get attribute points. And then we're gonna do one more thing, which is on level up. And we're gonna slap that in there. And the reason why this actually went into a separate function and not within our check XP 
is in case anyone makes any type of like quest or situation where you just gain X amount of levels, you'll just gain them right away. So the other thing you could do is that for the level up, instead of just specifying three, you can add an input. We're gonna do another float for value. And you could do multiply by three and plug that in. So if you are trying to add more than one level, you'll gain X amount of attribute points. Then we just go back into our modify attribute, slap in this value, like so. And now you can support gaining more than one level at a time through other types of quests, situations, whatever you may want. Now, the next part is we're just going to get into setting up a UI. But before I end this part, I'm going to demonstrate the functionalities. So we're going to go ahead off of here. We're going to do a debug one key. We'll do a debug two key. And sorry, there's also the stat system, but the next parts do not actually go into the functions themselves as far as like changing calculations. So at this point, your stat system should calculate, add, subtract, set, all according to all of the functions. We're gonna do a modify attribute. We're gonna go ahead and do strength. We'll do default, default, one, one, and subtract. I'm gonna go over here. I have the blueprint debugger already on, but to locate it, go into tools, debug, and blueprint debugger. And then just also make sure data flow is on. So when I hit play, I'm gonna click open this. We see our attributes. This is our strength with all of the values. And this is all of our health and max health. So we see all of this available. I'm gonna hit one. We gained one health or one strength and that gained us 50 max health and 50 health. I'm gonna add it again and we see that we go up by 50. And then we also see our default values going up and our total stays the same. Now I'm gonna subtract. We go all the way down. And then now we're back to one. And actually, now we're back to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract one more time. And you'll notice that the value is not changing anymore because we reach zero. So our health, our default health is actually not going lower even though the strength is zero. So the base values you have will stay. So our scaling stat is in fact working. What we can also do is instead of modify attribute, we could do modify stat. We're gonna go ahead and just use attack. And let's say bonus attack. One and one. Subtract. I'm gonna do another debug three key where I'm going to subtract my actual default. So we're gonna go ahead and locate this, which is under agility, and we have our attack. We currently have five. I pressed three, and we're gaining, or sorry, we're losing attack on our default. I'm pressing one, which means we are gaining our bonus. So you see it going up. So technically right now we have a total of 10 attack. And then now I am subtracting our bonus as well, all the way down to zero. So our stats are going up 
they are scaling and the functionality is there. So that concludes this part. Now for step six, we're going to create a save system. The save systems can be super simple. It's actually just going to be utilizing the variable attribute and then storing it within a saved game object. So what we'll need to start from is that on event begin play, there's a few things that we'll end up doing for our system. So we'll need to not only save our stats, but we're also going to need to load them. So when we begin the game, if you have a save file, we'll want to end up loading any type of attributes that we had. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom event. We're gonna call this load attributes. And then on begin play, we would end up wanting to load those attributes. Now there's no function yet, but that is what we're going to end up doing. And then we also at some point need to have a custom event or save attributes. So we'll end up having to utilize both of these functions. And in order to save and load, we need to create that save game object. And we also need to communicate with something in order to tell it, hey, please save. And then also I need to load. So we need to create a game instance. A game instance can only have one within your game, as well as it's the one of the only things that are persistent through all, all your levels. And persistent just means that it doesn't get reset when you open another level type thing. It just remains the same. So what we need to do is we're gonna create a new folder. We'll call this system, new class, it's going to be a game instance. We're just going to call this GI main. Open it up here. And for the game instance, since you can only have one in your game, you actually have to go into your project settings. Type in game instance. And you'll have to enter it in. So don't forget this step. Otherwise, you'll be very confused why things are not working. So from here, now we need to be setting up how to do our save game file. We're not gonna do the save game file within our actual stat system as it would just be better to manage it outside of the realm, depending on if you end up having things that are outside of just stats. So if you end up saving um, player name, maybe their model, all of that kind of information, then it's definitely better not to just store everything within a stat system. And what we want to do is that when we start the game, which in the game instance, that is called the event init, which is initialize. This is when the game starts up, not when the game begins. This actually fires before begin play for other objects and stuff. We wanna to check to see if we currently have a save game file. So we're gonna do save game exists. And then the slot name, what we're gonna be using is attributes, but to keep it really nice and tidy for us in the future, we're going to promote this to a variable. I'm gonna leave it as slot name, hit compile, and then just make sure you have a value for the slot name. And then that way, whenever we're doing a save game file, we don't really have to worry about passing along the slot name. We'll do a branch. And then we are going to check to see it. load game from slot. So since we already checked to see, does it exist? If it does exist, we're now going to load this game. Now to load this game, we now need to have a save game file. Right now we haven't made one yet. So we're gonna go back into our content drawer. We're gonna make the save game object. We're gonna call this SG uh, attributes. Open that up. And the only thing we're going to be doing here is our stored attributes. This is just gonna be our player stats. And all we're gonna do is store that piece of information. And within this itself, we don't need to do anything. So we'll close that out. So now that we have that made, we can actually 
load the game and store it somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and pass to SG attributes and promote that to a variable. And we're just going to call this SG file just for a short. And this is only going to get fired off once, which is why casting is completely fine because we don't really have to worry about it ever getting called again. And it's not really performance heavy at all, especially upon initialization. And then what we want to do is that if the game does not exist, we need to make one. So we're going to do create save game object. We're going to call this the save game attributes. And then we will set it as such. We don't need a cast because we're just creating a brand new one and we've already specified the class that we're doing. Now, we need to handle the ability to save and load from this file that we just made. So it will now calculate based upon, can we actually create one? Can we save one? And we need our attribute system to pass it along. So we're going to create an interface go into blueprint interface we're going to call this bi system and the two things we need to do is the load attributes and the save attributes now for our save attribute system or not system um, interface we need one input. This is going to be the player attributes. This is what's going to tell our game instance that we need to save these values like so. And then for the load attributes, we're going to be doing the opposite. This is going to be telling our component that we need to now use these values. So we're going to call this the save attributes because we're passing along the saved attributes. So let's go ahead back into our game instance. We're going to go ahead and add in the BI system. We're going to click on save attributes. And then you will then see this function. I'm going to drag it down a little just for some space. From here, we're going to go ahead, drag this off. And we'll find our stored attributes. And we're going to now set it to the new value that we received. Uh, sorry, we didn't need to pull it off. We need to set it like that. So you have to do set stored attributes like so. I don't know why I did the get. My brain ain't, ain't mathin'. And then since we have now changed the value, we want to save game to slot, which will store our file to the specific slot we specify which is going to be the persistent one that we're using throughout all of these functions. And then you could do something like branch, where if it is true, you could print, I don't know, succeed. Or if you wanted to like create a UI to make that pop up or whatever, you could go ahead and do that. Now let's hit the load attributes. We're gonna grab our save game file. We're going to get the stored attributes and pass that along. And that just means that if anybody tries to message the game instance that, hey, I need these values from the save file, we can then pull those values. We're going to go back into our stat system. From here, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and grab our game instance. And we need to call those two messages that we just created. So the load and the save. So we'll do load attributes. And then we're going to do save attributes. And we just need to react accordingly to whatever we're going to want to do. So in the case for the load attributes, we need to take the new values and set them. And when we are saving, 
we'll pass that along, like so. And then we have a fully functional save system where we're communicating with our game instance to save and load all of the attributes. And this will also be able to receive all this information, store it, and then at the beginning of the game, we can load and save. Now, one thing I want to mention is that this is going to be using the default values of the save system from the beginning. What you may not want to do is you may not want to create the save game file, and then you may not want to load the stats based upon the save game file in the beginning. That is mainly because if you have different default stats you want to use, you may need to modify things so that you're not always having the same default stats. So just bear in mind that if you are doing this specific system, you will end up only using what is default within the save game attributes here. So bear that in mind, but that is our save system. Step seven, which is just going to be a demo UI. It's going to be horrendous. I am not trying to make this the prettiest looking thing. So we're not gonna really focus on those details, but we're gonna focus on getting our stats populated so that it is visible and you can learn how to connect this system to the UI. So that being said, we're gonna go into our stat component. And what we want to do is create a brand new dispatcher. This is going to be the update UI. And every time this is called, this is when our UI is gonna know when to update any of the stats. So with this, we're gonna plug it in to when we load our attributes into our game. We wanna make sure updating the stats on the UI immediately. Then at the end of modify attribute, we're gonna slap this at the end. So we're gonna make a pin right here, drag that around. Just do that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go to modify stat again, all the way at the end. And then we're going to slap that on as well. And that will let us know that we will only update the UI after we have changed the default and bonus values of our attributes and stats and allows to call it to the like the, the most minimum amount that we could do. I know most minimum isn't really English, but you kind of understand what I mean. Now that we have set up how we're gonna communicate, let's go into our character. Our stat system, if not added, make sure to add it now, because we do need it. We're gonna go ahead and create widget. We don't have anything yet. We're going to have a player controller. We want to make sure we add this to the viewport. I'm going to set UI game mode. Play this over here. Plug that in. I don't want to hide the mouse cursor. I'm just gonna hit flush and then we'll just say lock always. And then lastly, set show mouse cursor. Very default stuff just so that we create the UI and that it is visible. We don't have anything here, so let's go ahead and create a widget back into our stat system, new folder, call this UI. And then we're going to create a new widget. I myself love common UI and I use it for almost everything. You don't have to use common UI. You could use a standard user widget if you want. It won't affect anything within this tutorial. 
So UI main, doing that. We're gonna go ahead and open this. Since this is common UI, we just need to select that auto activate. For those not using it, completely irrelevant to you, doesn't matter. Next, we need to add a variable where we can store the stat system within our UI. So we're gonna go into here. We're just gonna call this stat component stat, I think we call it stat system. And what we're gonna use is not an object reference, we're gonna use a soft object reference. Now the reason we're doing a soft object reference is so that we can actually minimize how much we're actually storing within our UI at all times. This is just pretty helpful so we're not always storing our stats in multiple locations. We don't wanna always have our values everywhere and the reference everywhere. So it does help with performance to a level of degree. And then when we want to actually use the functions, you would use the resolve solve reference, which will then pull that direct reference so that we could do anything we want, like modify attribute and all kinds of things like that. So that's the purpose for storing it as such. The main thing we want to do is we want to bind event to UI update or update UI, set it backwards, but you know what I meant. And whenever this is called, we want to do something. So we're gonna create an event. Can you work? I'm not sure what happened here, but let's do create. Oh, that was odd. I think I had to just compile, that's my bad. And then we'll do a matching function. This function is going to be our refresh UI. As of right now, we haven't created any type of widget at the moment, so we can't actually continue the refresh. So we're gonna kind of revisit that later, but it's very important for us to set up the UI immediately. The next thing we want to do is another function, and this is going to be the create attributes. This is what's going to initially create the UI, and then we'll just continuously update as we go along. That way we don't have to constantly recreate this. You could re recreate the UI if you want to, but it's usually better to just reuse the same things over and over again. And then if you hide the UI, just unbind from the event and that could help you with some performance. Within here, what we need to do, grab that stat component. We're gonna go ahead and resolve that reference. We only have to do that kind of a lot in the beginning, but once we, once you're in the game, you're only gonna be resolving essentially when you're refreshing the UI, which isn't gonna be all the time, but I mean, it happens fairly often. We're gonna get those attributes that are stored in there. Going to go ahead and break this. And now we can loop through all of our attributes that we have available. And from here is when we need to create another widget. And that's where we're going to end up storing all of our attributes but we need to create essentially a template so that we can actually populate information into it. As of right now, our designer is completely fresh. We got absolutely nothing here. So let's go ahead and add a canvas as just a template of this is what we're starting off with. Next, we're gonna throw down a border. This is gonna play as like a dummy background. Let's move this brush color to black. Set the padding to zero. And I'm gonna align this to the right side. And then I am gonna change this to about third, mm, let's do like 35. And just hit zero all over here. And we fill in that gap. We're gonna do the vertical box. 
in the border, set it to fill completely, and let's add a border padding of like 10, just so that nothing actually reaches the endpoint. Let's rename this to our stats UI and make it a variable. Typically, in your own UI, you would make this a separate widget from your main widget. Since it's the demo only, I don't actually care and I'm just showcasing. So really emphasizing on the point that this is a demo and not how you should directly do in your game as far as setting up the UI. When it comes to connecting to the stats themselves, yes, that is proper and that is what you should do. So let's get into actually creating that widget. We need to first create our attributes before we can create our stats because the stats come from the attributes. So we're going to go ahead, common user widget. We're going to do UI single attribute and open this up. This attribute is going to essentially store not only the name of the attribute, it's going to have its values, the total, default, and bonus. We will then also have the option to upgrade if it's strength, agility, intelligence. And then we will show all the stats that are underneath it. There's a couple things we need to add. So we're going to go ahead, do another border for. Mm, Actually, I lied. We don't need a border. I'm not going to do a background for it. We're going to do a vertical box. And for the vertical box, we are going to then add in a horizontal box. And this is where we're going to add in all of our attributes information. So let's grab a ton of text and I'm a copy and paste as such. The first thing we're going to represent is the name of the attribute. So this could be like your level. The next one is going to be our total, which is going to be a zero value. Actually, let's just put two, or actually, no, I'm gonna do like 10. The next one, we want our default. Oop. Let's just put six as a default, and we'll do default and make it a variable. Then we're gonna do our bonus, which is gonna be four, because six plus four equals 10 bonus turn that into a variable as well now you see that everything is all bunched together i also am going to cheat because i don't really want to format things so i'm going to turn this into a plus sign so that's six plus four equals ten obviously i'm going to space this out but give me a moment i'm going to go ahead and copy one more time and i'm going to add a bar so that bar is going to add as that separation. And then for the bar, I'm going to go ahead and add like two spaces before and after. Because like I said, I don't really want to format. I'm going to be lazy. And I'm going to make this like 35. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the fill button. It's going to shove all of that to the right side. I'm also for the total going to hit that four but fill button. But I'm going to move this to the center. And then for the bar, mm, we're going to have that right aligned. And that's also going to be in the center. And I think for the default and the auto, the default and the bonus will just leave as auto. So let's go ahead, change this to custom. Let's change this to like 400. So it's going to kind of look like that and then let's actually just change the text color a bit 
So the total is going to be maybe like this bluish color. The attribute's name, let's change to like a purplish. And then for the default, kind of have this greenish color. And I'm also going to make that bar the same color. And this is going to be like a bright green. So that'll kind of get our separation. And I think these we can put in the center like that. Then we're going to throw in a button into here. And this is going to act as our upgrade button. We're not really going to do much with it um, as far as like design goes, because I, I just don't care. We're going to do five. And then we'll set that 32 is fine. Yeah. And this button is only going to appear for those where it's actually important for. Uh, let's also center align that as well so everything is just lined up. For this, let's add a padding of like five. And we're going to throw down another vertical box. Oops, sorry. A vertical box within the top vertical box. Like so. This is going to represent our stats. So it's going to be the stats box. Make it a variable. Change this to attribute box just so that we can properly name things. And they both should be set to fill. Okay. And for the stat box, I'm also going to do a padding of five just for some separation. And I'm going to remove the padding at the bottom to zero. So now our attributes will be added essentially right below. Or our attributes will be added above all of the other stats that are involved. Now within our system, we need to be able to connect all the information. So we need to update the name and we need to update all the values. Upon the initial construction, we want to create our stats. So we're going to go ahead, create stats. And this is going to be the very first function we start off with, which is going to set all of our values. And it's going to set all of the stats values. So going into here, I guess we could call it literally anything. We are going to need a variable for our stat that we store, which is going to be the single attribute. Or I guess we could just call it attribute. And this is going to be a single attribute. We want to make sure to make it instance editable and then expose it. So when we create this, we can actually then pass along that attribute. So when we grab this out, we can then go ahead and break this. And then we can go ahead and let's grab our name, set text, and then this has to go to string, and then plug that in as well. Kind of has to go all the way around. We're going to hide all these other pins. Uh, I think I can move this down. And then we are going to have a separate function, which is not directly creating. This is going to be the update for all of the values. The reason why I separated it is because I don't think we need to set our text for the stat every time we update. So I had it separated so that it's just one less value that we're constantly checking and changing. It's not going to make a huge difference, but it does help out. 
So over here, we're going to do update item. And within the update item, we need one type of input. It's going to be a bool, and this is just going to be the upgrade to essentially allow us to know, can we upgrade? And should we actually have that button that we have available to show? We're going to go ahead and grab our attribute. Break. Going to hide all of these except for the float values. And let's grab our default, our bonus. And it looks like we forgot to make our total a variable, like so. And we'll do a set text. Oh, I hit S and not D, my bad. And this is going to set our bonus, default, and total values. Do default. Bonus. And total. There we go. Just evening it out. I like neatness. Now we would call this function every time we want to update those values. And then we also need to update all of our stats. Now we haven't added in our stats yet. So we're just going to build these functions. So we're going to break this off again, get all these stats and we're going to loop. And what we do is that within our stats, we want to then tell our other stats on how to update. Now we can't really continue on with this part. So we're going to kind of stop right here and revisit once we make those stat. But the next thing we want to handle is the button. So right now we have this button, which I'm going to rename to upgrade button. And this button, whenever we update, we need to decide whether it is enabled or disabled. So whether you can actually choose to upgrade or not. So we're gonna grab first things first is valid. We wanna make sure this button exists because for those that aren't gonna use this button, they're not gonna have it. We're gonna do an and. And then upgrade. We're going to branch out. So essentially, if the button doesn't exist, or if this is not true, then we'll just disable the button. So we're going to get this. We're going to set is enabled. Copy it. Plug that in. Like so. And if both are true, then the button will work. If it's not true, then we're going to remove it. So very, very simple. Let's go back into our create stats. We're going to slap this on update item. And now we need to be able to create our stats. So we haven't really created them yet. So we have to now work on that. And then our stats actually have to go in between this portion because we can't update anything if they don't exist. Let's go into our UI one more time. Let's make another common user widget. UI single stat. And it's actually gonna be extremely similar to the attribute. Go ahead and grab only this portion. We don't need that vertical box portion. 
and paste. And I'm going to wrap this with a border. I won't be using a brush color, but I want to add extra padding. Specifically on the left and the right. So I'm going to add padding. Let's do like 30 on the left and 30 on the right. And then top is just going to be five and five. So if we do custom, about 400 like so. It's just going to be a bit more spaced out. And then I'm also going to change this color. Instead of purple, we'll go more of like a pinkish, just so it looks different. And then we're also going to delete that button. Stats aren't going to have an upgrade button, so we don't really need it. And that's our design. We should have them as variables already with the three important ones and then the name. Now, for the stats, we actually just need a, essentially one function, technically, which is going to be the update item. Since they're being created elsewhere, we just have to make sure that we actually update all the, the info. So we're going to grab that bonus default and total. Set text two and three. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new variable, which is just going to be the stat. It's going to be the single stat. And just the same, make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. We grab here. We're going to break it off, hide everything but the three values, and plug that in. Um, Deciding on how I want to organize this. Yeah, good enough. Which is pretty simple for here. So back to the event graph. We need the update item. And then we also just need to do the same thing with the name. But again, we're only going to be doing the name one time. I don't really have to worry about updating all the time. So we'll do name. And then Grab the name here, set text, uh, to string, I forget, has to go to string first, and then it could go into a text, and then plug that in. So upon being constructed, it will then update its item. So next thing we need to do is essentially kind of work backwards within here in our attribute. We need to be able to create all of these stats. I'm going to just break this off just to make it a bit more cleaner. And reusing the same variable doesn't really cost you anything, so it doesn't really matter if you copy and paste using the same variable. This update item is going to go at the end as such. And then we're going to go into creating our stat. Oops, sorry. Create widget. Then we'll make our stat, plug in that in. And then we also need to add the new stats to our vertical box so that it's actually in our UI. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We then are going to call our update item. And then what we want to do is 
check that right at the moment. It'll go into the update item, which will then go through all of this. And then it will decide based upon if it can upgrade, et cetera, if it should be enabled or if it shouldn't, just depends. However, before we actually move along with that, we need to know how to communicate within all of our attributes, if it should have the button or if it shouldn't. So it kind of depends on, do we need to remove it? Do we need to keep that button? So if we grabbed this button, as such, copy this over here, take that bool that we used, branch, And then we will decide if set is enabled, as in it's hiding, or remove from parent. And basically, if the, the attribute has this set to false, we're just going to actually delete that button and we're just removing it altogether. So it doesn't even matter. And then from the beginning, I don't start off with anyone having attributes in the beginning. However, if you do, you'll want this to be enabled or you could just remove this altogether and then you don't really need that aspect. You could have it like that if you want to. I do need it there, so therefore I'm going to leave it. And that is what's going to allow me to add and remove that um, but back to our event graph, there's a couple other situations we now have to think about. So we have created our stat. However, right now we have no way to actually update the info. And we have no way to update the info of our single attribute. So back to our UI main. our original create attributes function. We want to do the attribute, plug that in. We're gonna also grab the stats UI. That is a, another vertical box in case you forgot. Uh, oop, sorry, add child vertical box. And we also need to add in a way so that we can communicate that we are upgrading our attribute for those that have the button, the upgrade button. You can't see it right now because essentially it's hidden because it's considered as false. So by default, if I went into here and change this to can upgrade, hit compile, we can see the button is now disabled based upon whatever attribute you pass along will depend on what is shown here. And then in the pre-construct, we change that value and then things are different. So now to think about the fact of our upgrade function, we're going to create a dispatcher, which is gonna allow us to communicate that, hey, we're gonna now upgrade this attribute. We're going to call this on attribute upgrade. This is going to be simple as in we press the clicked and then we're going to drop this and hit call. So whenever we click the upgrade button, we're going to then say that we can upgrade this attribute and then we're going to add a parameter, which is going to be the attribute list attribute. And we're only going to pass along the name. So whenever we click this button, we're just going to communicate with who's listening, which is going to be our main UI that we are now going to upgrade. Oh, come on. It's because I changed the, the name. 
there we go. So we are able to handle when upgrading the attribute. We're going to go into here. When we create our single attribute, we're going to do bind on attribute upgrade. Great. And make a matching function. Within this is going to be our add attribute function. Within here, you could do one of two things. One, you can choose to add in the functionality into this UI or in the stat system, you can make a new function. So I'm gonna do a add attribute value. This is going to be an input attribute, attribute, and we'll do a modify Actually, instead of add attribute value, we're going to do use attribute point. Make a second. Plug in this. We're going to use default, and then we're going to use add. And the value is just going to be one. So whenever you use a point, you increase the default by one. And then we also want to subtract the default value of our attribute points by one. So whenever we use a point, we will decrease it, and then we also modify it. Going back into our UI main, grab the stack component, resolve, use attribute point. And this is mainly so that I don't actually use the functions within a specific UI. So if I create another UI, I can actually use the same function. Or if I create anything else to communicate with using attributes, I can just use this. So that allows a bit more flexibility. And I think I'm gonna use add attribute value as such. So that allows us to use that. Now we need to actually make sure that we can communicate with the fact that we have used the attribute. So now our attributes themselves shouldn't be able to continue to, to show that button is available. So within our event graph, we create our attribute. Within our attribute, we are creating the single attributes widgets, and then we're adding them to our UI, and then we're binding to that button. We go into our single attribute. As of right now, all we do is showcase the fact that we can create the stats, and then we can upgrade. But now we need an ability so that when things happen, we just update. We're going to go ahead and create a new interface, which is going to be blueprint interface, BI, and then we'll just call this UI. Within this interface, we're actually just going to do two functions, send attribute, and send stat. Send attribute is going to send to our single attributes that here is the new information to update, as well as if they are allowed to have that button available. So we're going to have the can upgrade. 
and then I'm going to move this on top. And this is going to be the attribute. And we're going to pass, pass along the single attribute information. Then we're going to go into the send stat. And this is going to be the single stat. Stat. Going back into our single attribute, we're going to add in this interface. Do the same thing to our single stat UI. Hit compile. Under interfaces, double click send attribute. And now every time we send the update, we can then tell our attribute what to do. So we're going to go ahead, set the new information. And then we're going to update all of our info. And this is going to pass along the upgrade. And then within here, we check to see if it is true. If it is, the button's enabled. If not, it's not going to be enabled. So going into create stats, we're going to have to do the same thing. So when we, um, sorry, not create stats, update item. When we update, our individual attributes, we also need to update all of our stats. And the best way to do it, based upon how we created our stats, we just looped it from the beginning to the end. So we're gonna get child at, and we're just gonna plug in the index. This is the exact same way of which we created the stats where we looped through. So the indexes are actually just going to match. So I'm not adding or subtracting any type of stats throughout the process. So I don't really have to worry about if they actually equal to the same name. Now going through, we want to send the stat. And for here, move this down and plug it in. And this will communicate to our single stat that, hey, now you need to update. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go ahead, drop down interface, and do send stat. And then we're also going to grab this, set it. And then we're going to do the update item. Now our attributes and our stats can listen. They're able to upgrade. Now we just need to be able to send a message to them. So back into the UI main, we're going to go into refresh UI. So the function we originally created, grabbing the stat component, resolve. We're going to grab the attributes. We're then going to break this. loop. And just like the stats, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to grab our box that we have stored at. We're going to get child at with the same index. And then we're also going to do the send attribute. And then we're going to plug that in. One last thing for the attributes, we need to let it know whether we have enough attribute points. So within our stat component, we're going to do a get attribute value. And we are going to look for the total attribute points and then check if this is greater than zero and plug that in. And now, our attributes will refresh every time we get told to update the UI from our stat system. And then we will continue to create our attributes. We will make the individual one. We'll make sure we bind to any type of change uh, value events. 
we're then going to go into our single attribute, which then can listen to that update. It will also create our stats, which sets our name. We then communicate with the single stat, uh, add it to the box, and then we go into updating our items. And then in here, we also communicate to the stat that it needs to update. And then we choose whether to enable or disable this. So before we do anything, we hit compile. Go ahead and hit this refresh. Oh, sorry, go back to UI main. We need to make this instance editable and exposed on spawn. Go back to your character, hit refresh. You should then see stat component available and you'll plug that in. And this is so that when the UI is first created, we have a reference to the stats and let's see if things populate. So we hit the play button. We do see that our level is appearing. We see that our base values are one and one equal to two. Health, max health are at 100. Agility is at two. And intelligence at two. Mana regens at one. And we have no attribute points. So going into our character, or not character, sorry, our stat system, I'm gonna go into our event graph. We're gonna do a debug one key. We're gonna modify the attribute. I'm going to add a level like so. I'll press the one key. Oh, looks like I messed up. I forgot to set the type to default. Press the one key. And you'll notice that our buttons are now enabled. I now have three attribute points. And I can, in fact, go one, two. And you'll see the stats are increasing. Stats are increasing. I'm going to do the debug key, debug two key. I'm going to do a modify stats. And I'm going to decrease our base health by 50. So when I go into here, I'm going to press 2. So our health actually went down to 50. And then if I press 2 again, I'm at 0. So I'm also going to go into the character. If I click on our stat system, you can see the dispatches we made. So I'm going to do on death, which means I reached, reached zero health. I'm going to set simulated physics to true. And I'm going to kill the character. So I'm going to press two and two. And you'll notice I just fall straight through the floor. The character died. So it did receive it. We're able to subtract. All of our conditions work. We're able to add a level. We're able to then change all of our stats. And like so, we can continue to modify anything that we want here. And there you go. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I spent a lot of time and dedication with trying to make this as robust as possible. There's most likely use cases that I did not cover. I do have the entire project within my GitHub. It's gonna be in the description. It'll also have any type of updates that I do in the future. I'm definitely not done with this project and I plan on making it more robust in the future. So you can go straight to the GitHub to see the newest updates. You can also join the Discord. I do really want your support. If you guys could please subscribe, join the YouTube membership, any type of donation I really appreciate. I did spend a lot of time on this project, so I do hope you do enjoy the system. I want it to be as useful to all types of scenarios. So please leave comments if there is a use case that I missed. You can also join the Discord. I'll answer any questions if you get stuck along the way. But I really appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your day.